Hello, I'm Jerry Spinelli with the University of California Cooperative Extension in San Diego. I'm the advisor for nurseries and greenhouses and my specialty is irrigation. So the other day I was in the field and the grower told me, no, 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 Jerry, gate valves reduce flow rate and ball valves reduce pressure. And was there like, like and I was there like, well, well, actually let me tell you it's like no 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 no, jerry I, I know this i went to college i learned this in college i went to college i know this gate valves reduce pressure and 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 ball valves reduce flow rate and i was like well let me tell you no 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 no, no jerry i know this so um today um hopefully with this, this video i will make some clarity on this um, and I make these videos, they're a little bit for me uh, for to uh, vent my frustration because you guys listen for once or at least I, I get that um, impression. And so it's a little bit of therapy, it's therapy for me. So, so I, I really appreciate you guys listening. So today, so today the question is, does a gate valve or, or, a, or, a, or a ball valve or, or, or a plugged filter or anything anything that has some effect on the hydraulics of the irrigation system what does it do does it reduce pressure or does it reduce flow rate and 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 hopefully i will be able to walk you through the answer and and the answer is like both or 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 it it, it directly reduces pressure and it indirectly depending on what's downstream and what and depending on what's downstream react to that decrease in pressure it can um, and most of the time it also does reduce flow rate but i i want to give you the, the 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 easy answer the quick answer is both it reduces pressure there at the point it creates a a pressure loss a localized pressure loss and it and it depending on what's downstream most of the time it also reduces uh, flow rate but you cannot say this reduces flow rate and it does it does reduce pressure it always reduces pressure it's that's what it does right it, it's because it causes a localized pressure loss so this is the short answer and now i'm gonna go through the long answer so here i drew the outline of an irrigation system we have a pump here we have a main line three inch main line is 650 feet long we have an elbow here we have a filter another elbow um, this is just an example right sometimes you will have more complicated um, outlines of irrigation system uh, here we have two um, two irrigation blocks uh, with each of them has their own valve and so in this theoretical scenario we have a pump that produces 50 psi and the water making its way to the valve loses uh, uh, some pressure so that past the valve we have 12 psi and at the end of the line at the end of the drip lines we have 8 psi so we can kind of assume that on the average the drip lines are being exposed to an average of 10 psi and here in this example, I said that we have 50 beds and they're 300 feet long and there are two drip lines per bed. And so we have 30,000 feet of, of linear drip line. And uh, typically the drip line flow rate is expressed in gallons per minute per 100 feet. So basically they're trying to tell you, look, at 10 PSI, at this pressure, every, every 100 feet of linear drip line that you have uh, those 100 feet will put out 0 0.5 gallons per minute so in this case in this case we have 30,000 feet of linear uh, drip line and so we uh, have a total flow rate a total flow rate of this block is 150 gallons per minute so the um irrigation system delivers this pressure and the and pressure pressure is kind of the currency that you use in, irrig in an irrigation system and here here i calculated all the pressure losses that we encounter that our water encounters as it travels from the pump to the block 
So we have a, you have a main line here, this three inch main line. Then we have an, an elbow here. Then we have another main piece of main line before the filter. Uh, that loses 5 PSI and then we have the filter that maybe is half plugged or something and it loses 7 PSI. Then we have another elbow that is also another localized pressure loss and in this case I'm saying 1 PSI. And then we have this other piece of, of main line after the filter 2 PSI. Now let's say that I have this valve that it's half, it's half closed like my, like my grower said. Um, that fact that the valve is half um, choked, is half closed, will cause a localized pressure loss. But as far as the irrigation system is, is concerned, it doesn't matter if it's a main line, it doesn't matter if it's a filter, it doesn't matter if it's three elbows in a row, it doesn't matter if it's a valve that is half choked. It all, it all represents a pressure loss. It all represents a pressure loss. And, and, and you can sum the pressure loss, and in this case we have 38 psi of pressure loss and so from our pump from our 50 psi uh, in our pump we lose 38 psi in our irrigation system and at the block we have 12 psi and this, in this case i calculated the pressure loss on the main line for 150 gallons per minute because of course if you have a larger flow rate then these pressure losses will be larger in the main line, in the filter, everywhere, we will have larger pressure losses. And here, and here, I show the graph of how a pump behaves hydraulically, and I show a graph of how a, a drip line behaves uh, hydraulically. So, the pump, the pump tells you. Uh, so we have a dependent variable and, and an independent variable. So. For the, for the pump, the dependent variable is pressure. So the pump tells you, look, if you ask, if you ask 150 gallons per minute, I will give you 50 psi. If you ask me more, if you ask that I give you more uh, flow rate, then I will give you less pressure. Right? This curve is negatively shaped. If you ask less flow rate, then I will be able to give you more pressure. This is how, how a pump behaves. You ask me a flow rate, I'll give you a pressure um, with a negative relationship associated with that flow rate. The drip line is the opposite. The drip line is the opposite. The drip line tells you, look, you give me a pressure, you expose me to a some pressure, I will produce a certain flow rate. And in this case, instead it's positively positively related, right? You put, you put, you expose me to a higher pressure, I will produce more, more flow rate. You expose me to, to smaller pressure, I will produce a smaller flow rate. But now, check this out. We have the same variables, we have the same variables on these two graphs, and, uh, but the, but the axes are flipped. The axes are flipped. So, what we can do, we can take this graph, we can take this graph and flip it around this way so we get the flow rate on the x-axis and the pressure on the y-axis and this also would will flip will flip i hope i hope you can see so this curve this curve will look like something like this can you see it i hope that you can see it and so to draw to draw this scenario that we have in this in this graph, we will have something like this. We have this 38, we have this 38 psi of pressure drop that are represented here on this graph. So let's say that this line is 38 psi of pressure drop that's caused by my irrigation system. And so down here, down here, we have those 12 PSI. We have those 12 PSI here. These are 12. And that's why, and that's why our drip line 
um, no, I'm sorry, not 12, 10. A 10 PSI average, we said. A 10 PSI, our, our pressure, our drip line produces 0.5 gallons per hour per 100 feet. But since we have all those many feet, then we got 150 gallons per minute. So, so the pump, the pump produces 50, 50 psi at 150 gallons per minute. Those 100 gallons per minute travel in the in the in the in the pipeline. They lose some pressure when they get to the to the irrigation block, they, they, they have become about 10, 12 to 8 psi. On average, they have become 10 psi. And now the drip line sees those 10 psi and that those 10 psi produces 150 gallons per minute. So now, so now the whole system is in equilibrium. The pump produces a certain flow rate at that pressure. Some pressure is lost. The irrigation block sees that sees another pressure a lower pressure and that that pressure um, puts out the same the same amount of gallons per minute and that's why we're in equilibrium here now what happens what happens if my grower goes out there and half close and half close that gate valve that famous gate valve that is here he goes there and he he closes it a little bit more whether it's a gate valve or, or it's a ball valve or is anything else, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What would happen is that he would cause a higher pressure loss. So let's say that um, it causes, it goes, the pressure loss goes, as, uh, goes out to, goes up to 11, right? 11 PSI. So everything else is the same. Now, this, we increased the pressure loss by 4 PSI. So now the total here would be 42 PSI. Does it make sense? So now at the block, now at the block, we get 50 minus 42. How much is that? It's 8. 8 at the block. So here we get 8. 8 PSI. Let's say that here we get 6 PSI. And now our, our average is 7. 7 PSI. So now let's go back here. Let's go back here to the drip line. Now at 7 PSI, at 7 PSI, the drip line tells you, well, at, if you give me less pressure, I'll give you less flow rate. At 7 PSI, instead of producing 0.5 gallons per minute per 100 feet, I produce 0.4 gallons per minute per 100 feet. So now, 4 times 3 is 12. Instead of, instead of putting out the drip line, instead of putting out 150 GPM, now it puts out 120 GPM. 120 gallons per minute. So now, by closing that valve, by closing that valve, check, check out what we did. We created a pressure loss. We created a pressure loss. And then our, our drip line downstream reacted to that, to that lower pressure by reducing the flow rate. By reducing flow rate, the flow rate. So now the flow rate went down. We're at 120. But now let's check out what happened here. Because now the, the pump we, at the lower flow rate will produce a higher pressure. So now the total pressure loss is 42 PSI. So now we are here at 120 gallons per minute. I hope you can see 120 GPM. So we are here. Now, the, the, the drip line, the drip line that was this green curve here, instead of 10 PSI, it's seen 7 PSI because the pressure loss that was represented by this vertical line now is larger. Now it goes all the way from up here to here. 
Now it's 42 PSI. I hope you can see it. And the pump now, since, since, since the pressure loss reduced the flow rate, now the pump at that flow rate produce, produces higher pressure, right? So now the, pre the, the, the pressure at the pump, instead of being 50, it becomes 52, right? So it's, it's, it's a little bit of a system that chases, chases its tail, right? It's a little bit of a chicken and the egg system. But eventually, and so this, so this number don't work out anymore because this now became a, a 52, right? So it, you, you need to find another equilibrium. But you can see on the graph, you see it really nicely as you, as you, as you choke that valve. Or, or let's say that the, the, this, this main line broke and they fixed it and they, and they created a restriction. Or let's say that they changed this elbow, they had, to, they had to build a road here and so they had to make another elbow to go around. Or, or, or maybe the filter, the filter got plugged with some, with some junk. Whatever happened, whatever happened that caused an additional pressure loss in the, in the pipeline, in the irrigation system, it causes this, this bar here, this line, to get longer. Can you see it? And as, as it gets, as it gets longer now, it, it intercepts two different points in this equilibrium between the pump and the drip line. And so then it will find as the, as the, as this bar gets longer, the system, the pump, the interaction between the pump and the drip line will find a different equilibrium that is associated with the lower flow rate. Right. And because when this gets longer, the whole thing needs to move to the left and to the left to have a lower flow rate. And this is a new equilibrium between the pump and the drip line. Now, this is a traditional drip line. This is a normal drip line. But let's say, let's say that instead of having a drip line like this, and when I say traditional, I mean it has a relationship between flow rate and pressure. But uh, when we irrigate, what we like to do is to irrigate very uniformly. So we do not like the fact that our emitters or our drippers or our sprinklers put out different flow rates at different pressures. So there is some super smart engineer out there that works for an irrigation company that invented some uh, drippers that are called pressure compensating. Now, you can go out there and look up the curves of various um, drip lines or various drippers and this is the shape of the traditional ones like the one that I'm showing now but the new one that are called pressure compensating will have a curve like this but it's not even a curve it's just a line because it's flat so now the super duper smart engineer said okay I'm gonna make a thing I'm going to make a thing that it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what the pressure is it's always at 0.5 gallons per minute so the curve looks like an looks like a line you give it 20 psi it gives you 0.5 gallons per minute you give you give it 15 psi it gives you 0.5 gallons per minute. You give it 10 PSI, same. You give it 7 PSI, same. You give it 6 PSI, same. Right? Within, within a range, right? At zero, it cannot give you anything, of course. But, but within this range, within this range, it always gives you 0.5 gallons per minute. So now, what would happen, what would happen if you close a gate valve or if you close a ball valve and you have pressure compensating emitters downstream or if you have a pressure regulator downstream that hydraulically kind of behaves the same so now let's report let's report this behavior of our drip line of our pressure compensating drip line here 
on our on our pump on our pump graph and so we draw it at 0.5 we said that with those many feet it corresponds to 150 gallons per minute so imagine that we flip the axis and we put it there we get something like this so this green line now is not is not a is not a curve anymore it's just a vertical bar like this it's just a vertical bar like this can, can you see can you see so now it's telling you now it's telling you look if you reduce if you reduce the pressure loss if you if you increase the pressure loss if you reduce the pressure i still put out the same flow rate and so in the graph here we had we had an average of 10 psi at the beginning and so we were the we were here the pump was producing 50 psi we um the the pressure in the irrigation system drops down uh by 38 psi drops uh, drops down to um to 12 at the block so the so the the flow rate the the drip line gets an average of 10 and so at 10 psi it produces 150 gallons per minute now when you when you increase when you increase that pressure loss the the flow rate the flow rate remains the same because now you're still here this bar is just longer it's just longer instead of being 38 is 42 psi so this line that represents the pressure loss through the irrigation system is longer but it still intercepts at the same flow rate because it's a line doesn't matter how long it is it's still there so the flow rate will still be there of course there is a limit right if you give it if you give it 80 psi i'm guessing that it doesn't work anymore right i'm guessing that the pressure goes up or or maybe the thing bursts or i i, I don't even know i meant the flow rate goes up or, or i don't know what would happen if you give it too much of a high pressure but within that range within that range of specs if you close your valve, if you choke your valve, if you increase the pressure loss through the irrigation system, in the case in which you have pressure compensating, pressure compensating drip line, then your flow rate remains the same. So now we found an example, we found an example where you close, you close a gate valve, you reduced the pressure locally because this 7 psi increased to 11 psi when you choke that thing but the flow rate remained the same because we had pressure compensating emitters the same thing would happen if you had if you had pressure regulators downstream if you had pressure regulators downstream and by reducing the and, and by closing that valve, you reduce, a, you reduce the pressure to a point that it was still higher than what the pre pressure regulator was doing. Let's say that before, uh, when the valve was open, uh, the pressure regulator was seeing 15 psi and it was, in, it was regulating it down to 10. Now you choke the valve from 15 to 12 no so now the pressure regulator is seeing 12 psi but it's still dropping it down to 10 so downstream the sprinklers or the or the or, or the drip lines they're still putting out the same flow rate that they were before despite you closing that valve because the pressure regulator was was dropping the pressure further anyway so that's another example of a case in which a gate valve again or a ball valve or a filter that gets that gets dirtier or or or, or whatever reduced the pressure locally but did not cause a drop in flow rate so so the easy answer is a, a valve closing a valve always causes a pressure loss and sometime 
sometimes, usually, can also cause a reduction in flow rate. We hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you for those of you that made it to the bitter end. Please, please uh, click, uh, scan this code and complete the evaluation. It only takes you one minute. It's my only way, it's my only way to show my bosses that I did my job and, and, and that what I did was impactful or useful to somebody. And uh, contact me if you have any question or any comment. And thank you again for your time. And I will see you in the next video.